I decided to upgrade to the Z10 fuel tank because of its handy tank lid pull. You can see the difference between the new style and the old style tank. It drops in place easily, and once in place, I installed the remaining chassis side guard. I find it's easiest to set up the starter box when the engine is not in the buggy. You can barely clearly see if the wheel lines up in the slot in the chassis when the engine is not installed. I rebuilt the clutch with Z-Car's latest vented clutch bell. I decided to use one of the old non-anodized flywheels and the stiffest 1.1 millimeter clutch springs. And then brand new aluminum clutch shoes and rubber sealed bearing. I found these flanged M3 screws from Asumi, which I feel are the best clutch nut screws available. For installing the clutch, I like to use a flywheel wrench and a deep well 7mm quarter inch drive socket on a ratchet so I can really rally on the clutch nut. SH makes this handy clutch installation tool. I highly recommend buying one and using one. Install the collet and then the flywheel. I only use purple Loctite on the clutch nut. Once the collet grabs the flywheel, the wrench will hold the crank in place where you can really tighten the crap out of the clutch nut. I don't have a torque value for this, just get it really tight. Z-Car clutch shoes really only go on one way. This is where you'll really learn to appreciate the SH Engine's clutch shoe tool. It makes installing clutch shoes very easy. Now you need to shim the clutch bell for zero end play and zero preload with shims. Then install an M3 flange screw with purple Loctite and torque to 1.4 newton meters. At this stage in the game, I install the engine and just gear mesh, but I don't put Loctite on any of the screws or torque them very tight. This is so you can easily remove the engine for aligning the carburetor with the throttle and brake linkage. I love using Sullivan quick release ball joints on linkages whenever possible. I don't like using JQ Racing products, but adding his easy adjusters to the brake push rods make getting the Z car brake bias close much easier. Once you have it set close, you just use the screw to fine tune the bias. I lock one wheel in place with a wrench and apply the brakes on the transmitter and then adjust the brake bias so that it takes about half a newton meter of torque to overcome the braking force. At neutral, I like to have one half to one millimeter of dead band in the throttle push rod. Once I am happy with the brake bias and the operation of the throttle and brake linkage, I clip down the push rods with these very heavy duty clippers. Now that I have the throttle and brake linkages where I like them, it's time to use purple Loctite on all the engine mounting screws. The M4 flathead screws get torqued to 2.5 newton meters, and the special M4 Z cart engine mount screws are torqued to 2 newton meters. I used one of the new clear SH engines fuel filters and Z car fuel line to replace the old grimy fuel line. I didn't do anything fancy for installing the fuel line. I just installed it as the instructions show. You are going to want an exhaust spring tool and the one made by Yeah Racing is the best. One thing I love about Z cars is that if you're using an SH engine and an SH pipe, it is a very direct and easy bolt-in installation. I did get around to installing an antenna tube. I like to heat them up, bend them, and run them under the body. I have never had any range issues doing this. I like to do an initial alignment of the car to get them close, and I just use basic tools like an RPM camber gauge, turnbuckle wrenches, a metric scale, metric dial calipers, and a Gia height gauge. I like to do the initial alignment on four pieces of paper. Sometimes the tires really stick to your work surface and you don't get accurate readings. The paper allows the suspension to move very freely. 
Alignment gauges are good and bad. They can screw you on setting up your front toe and your steering. It is essential that your steering turnbuckles are the same length. Adjust the turnbuckles and your sub trim until you get the proper toe reading per your setup sheet. Double check to make sure the steering turnbuckles are the same length or you'll get inconsistent steering from left to right. Minus the body, this buggy is ready to go. Unfortunately, the season is over, so I won't be able to drive it until spring. Take a look at my airbrushing playlist and watch me paint a body for this fantastic vehicle. This is an excellent buggy for your average sportsman driver on a budget. It has been scientifically proven that by subscribing to this channel, you will become marginally less marginal. Bye!